Ladies and gentlemen, you're more than welcome to Cathedral Foundation and live on Cathedral.tv. Tonight, uh, my name is Newton Bayo and I'm your host. Uh, today, we are very privileged and, uh, uh, you know, Nick. to be visited and to be having a man that has inspired me, that has had a walk in the business field, a man whose work has been tested and seen. Without waiting any further time, I will say he is the CEO of a Shumuk group of company. At the same time, he is the, the chairman, board of governors, Global Peace Foundation. And today he says he is Cafero. <laughs> <laughs> we always need a further time. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Mr. Uh, Shumuk to this uh, discussion. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Good evening, everybody. All right, uh, you know, just as I mentioned, uh, today's Cafero Foundation, we are very privileged to have you live on Cafero.tv, which is a very fast online TV that creates a platform for young entrepreneurs to connect, to interact, to as well as, you know, uh, have the ideas known out there for them to seek better support for the businesses. But uh, just as we get started, let's, let's just inform the audience, who is Mr. Uh, I, I prefer calling you Mr. Shumuk. Who is Mr. Shumuk? I think uh, Mr. Mukesh Shukla is my name, and uh, I chair Shumo Group of Companies. I think you know basically the saucepans and the utensils. Most of the ladies here are our customers. So they've been using our product for over three decades. Okay. So that is our, uh, what you can say, flagship company. Of course, we are in some other businesses also. But as uh, Kafiro had invited me today, I will limit uh, my presentation or whatever information you want as an entrepreneur. Because as he correctly said, let's see how many shumuks we can generate in the next two, three decades. <laughs> <laughs> wow, quite interesting and uh, uh, it's, it's quite amazing for us to host you. But uh, just to have a quick picture, because when you see in the audience, most of the entrepreneurs are very young people that are driven by passion and they want to see themselves successful. I would like to probably ask you a quick question. Tell us who you were, uh, who you were and who you wanted to be when you were seven to eight years old at, you know, at the time and what dreams you had at the time. Uh, I think seven to eight years you reminded me, you have seen our old Kampala primary school. I was in P1. That was uh, here 1968, around seven years. So I think those days we had uh, so many Asians and uh, the teachers and all. And I remember my Musei was working with uh, customs in Uganda. Of course, our family had so many businesses, but he had opted to do public service. So well, we had a quite modest background, we were very happy and playing on a nice mango trees which are in the hill okay. <laughs> when I was six to seven. Okay. But uh, I don't think I had remembered anything apart from just playing with friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, you, you know seeing you as a, as a successful entrepreneur will say what made you take the leap into entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship basically, you know, because of the public service deteriorations in 79, 77 onwards, you know what happened in Uganda. Of course, most of uh, our Asian colleagues were chased out of this country. But there were some of the stubborn guys. And uh, uh, the public service was not good enough to give you a good living by the end of 70s. So early 80s, the inflation was too heavy. So I think my museum had sent me for business administration, which I did it in India for uh, three years, Bachelor of Business Administration. So that gave me a platform to think of business. Okay. Of course, our family businesses were there, but uh, he wanted us a uh, formal training in business. So basically, it is an accident. So you youngsters should not feel that there is anything planned, okay? <laughs> so when you are young, you always feel that 
uh, everything when somebody is successful it was thought at the time of uh, studies or something no it was just like connecting the dots afterwards mm. so feel free to think of anything whether you are a serv- public servant or you are a private servant or you are a private entrepreneur mm. the servant thing remains common so you have to serve to something whether you serve to your own business or you serve to the government business or you are serving to private company business yeah. or you are serving your passion so it it started because of the family background of businesses okay so in my assumption in that regard that that is what gave the foundation to to to, to your first business so could you probably share with us right now what your first business was uh, probably is it what we're seeing today you could just inform us maybe to give us an understanding of how to best do better mm, let me tell you one thing that the first business i never succeeded and whatever i wanted to do is not what i'm doing today basically i wanted to become a mechanical engineer okay but i didn't get good grades in a levels you see <laughs> so, so literally the, 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 the education system literally didn't allow for you to pro- proceed in that line so i was forced to basically do business studies based on an entrance examination okay because i flopped in uh, engineering grades so i didn't get the required numbers i think even today there are some basic numbers which you need so it forced me into business administration a bit early i wanted to do it masters of business administration first i wanted to have a technical base but somehow or another i couldn't get it i failed so don't worry about some failures probably same business that you said you failed in could be a business someone could be doing today and they're thinking could that be the business they're about to fail in would you do, do you mind you know <laughs> do you mind sharing with the audience right now what business that was and uh, uh, and and exactly at that point what was you, when did you receive your breakthrough which most of us will term as you know the miracle you know mm, let me just take you around as far as it doesn't uh, feed my ego <laughs> just to inspire you okay so make sure you bring me down if it goes but when i see the youngsters i feel that it is better to share so that they can understand correct. and they can also emulate it correct so i think once i finished the graduation i came back here in 82 and i think 82 was uh, about a 2 you remember the political situations in uganda we had uh, elections and uh, somehow the constitution was not accepted by something and obviously my muse said that um, there is no future as far as public service is concerned so now i've made you study bachelor of business administration so you go and show me what you can do now So I think we I went to you know Namirme Road yeah this former Lions Hotel next door to that we just I just hired a place from some local guy and we started a modest business of getting two bags of sugar and selling in retail that's how it started so basically he said that you don't have any money in terms of financing your further masters degree and at that time i think even now the bachelor's degree is been asked to get some experience of one or two years in business world to qualify to get into masters and that time i think we didn't have any college in uganda who was giving masters so i started to generate some fees no it was about 10 12000 $10, if i want to go to us or uk so that uh, that inspired me that let me go in the business world and try to make that money in two years <laughs> so as muzay didn't have it <laughs> and he had strictly warned me that you cannot go to any of your uncles you cannot go to any of my friends <laughs> for any help 
<laughs> so the fight was yours alone. You either sink or you swim. Yes. Okay. So that I went for some retail business. You know, you buy sugar from your Chikubu and you go up in Namirimbe Road and sell it. I think this is the best which I keep seeing. That's why I'm saying that youngsters should not think that there is anything less today than those days if you want to become a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, you know, Mr. Shum, quite interesting. You <laughs> sold sugar at at a retail level for quite a while, and probably someone there is doing the same thing today, uh, <laughs> right now, in this audience, probably watching us live. At, you know, and they're thinking now, when are they going to have that moment of reaching where you are today? So, do you mind sharing us when your breakthrough came? How many, For how long did you you know you know sell the, the, the kilograms of sugar? I think you know that Lions Hotel is owned by this uh, gentleman, Sekalala. Mm -hmm. Some of you may be knowing. And he was a friend of my father, so he was uh, advising me as a mentor, like you wanted my advice today, because he was a businessman at that time even. So he took me to him and he said, this is my son and uh, I want you to train him for business. Wow. I think Lang Musei Sekalala is still there. So he may not have forgotten. Because <laughs> I have not met him over a period of time. But okay. uh, basically I was studying in uh, in the library of uh, British Council. And uh, I used to spend about four hours in business and four hours I used to go in the library to study. Now somehow or another, you know, I became greedy and I went to Chikubu and whoever was supplying me two bags uh, wanted me to supply, take hundred bags. So I did take it, thinking the prices will go up and I was studying and I think suddenly the government removed some taxes. So the price was supposed to fall from 18, 19,000 to, to 13,000 or 14,000. So my brother came to the library and said, you are in trouble. Better leave these books and find out a way. Wow. So obviously I came to the business and uh, I didn't know anything. So I went myself to Chikubu and uh, established about five retailers. I think you have seen those retailers down mm -hmm. outside Chikubu who are selling the same one, one kg. Some of them could be in the audience right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I contacted about five and I asked them that you have to help me. I'm going to give you the sugar and I'll give you 1,000 shilling extra or whatever you are getting. And you help me to dispose this quickly. So there, thereafter I got somebody in Chikubu, I think we still alive, Bugere reproduce stores. Okay. There's an Haji. So I requested him that I'll bring my goods and uh, you help me to store it here so that I can distribute this these people. And then you can uh, you can share fifty percent of the profit to the shopkeeper. So I'm sure some of you are doing that today. So that's how I went into from retail to wholesale. It worked well and I finished it in one week. And uh, obviously my loss was mitigated. Of course there was a loss. But then I bought again another one and at a cheaper rate. And then I offset it. So that business gave me the experience that instead of sitting there up and selling, best is I come down. So that brought me to Kikubo. And I think there the turnover was very good. You know, you used to make good money very fast. So then obviously the suppliers of commodities we established and I think um, I was the first one uh, when I joined I think they were, at that time there was this uh, Bavazirian company 
who was bringing commodities from Kenya. Okay. So I started as a 37th distributor, but within I think two months I became first five. And uh, and then I think within one year I had four shops. Just wow. one year. <laughs> Quite interesting. So by 84, 84 uh, December, I had four shops, one on Kampala Road, one on uh, Chikubu, one on William Street and Namirembe Road. So everybody was selling for me. <laughs> so I think that was the, you can say, breakthrough. Okay. That once you learn that how 1,000 shilling is made, and the rest becomes easy. Hmm? Quite interesting, I'm sure very well. Our audience, uh, everyone there must be following what exactly uh, has been shared as an insight by Mr. Uh, Shukla, as I call him, Mr. Shumok. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's quite, quite, quite interesting. But it's still one thing that I'm in, in the same line. <laughs> now, after having the four you know, shops you had along different places, how did you have that growth? to where you are today? I think 84 and 85, 85 June, mm, I got a message that somehow or another there is a problem coming. I think you know, I still remember July 27th, 1985 it was our D-Day. I think some of you were not born. <laughs> <laughs> but some of you who were born are aware mm. that there was a General Tito Okello had taken over the coup and I think um, the man went into exile, the president and obviously we all had suffered. So I think um, July 27th to August somewhere we became minus $50,000. Because all the shops were robbed, all the warehouses were cleared. So I think that was a trial period. Then obviously most of us uh, as business people had lost hope. So um, I think come August, I tried to contact my suppliers, none of them wanted to supply. <laughs> so basically there is a very bad phase of six months and uh, people didn't want us to get any goods. So by end of August, then I went to UK and established some new contacts. The good thing is I was a good traveler, I enjoyed traveling. Okay. So from beginning, I kept that all the money I make first has to go for tickets. <laughs> that explains why you have a tour and travel agency yes. and a Shumo group of company. Yes, okay. that company is I think one of the oldest and I think uh, we had established in 92 somewhere. <laughs> I know some of you were never born by that time but so we were there. <laughs> yes. So it was a trial period but the good thing is we paid everybody in six months. Okay. I thought that we'll pay in five years at that time. 50,000 was like half a million dollar today. <laughs> so we managed to pay them in six months and again things went good but again you know Jul January 26th <laughs> 1986, no? January 26th yeah. So it was hardly about how many months? Six months or so? Mm -hmm. So by the time in December we were okay. <laughs> Again, we had this change of government. Okay. So, 87, mm, but anyway, I think then you know there was a fundamental change. <laughs> <laughs> so, because of that change, uh, the disturps, disruption stopped after 87. Okay, you may not make business because of competition increased. Uh, did you have any major competitors? And if so, how did you outcompete them? Or how did you play it right? How did you play it smart? You see, competition is a must. It, it, you sh we should see it positively. 
So the day we go into up to, uh, pessimism of competition, we will not grow. Mm. We should take competitor as our free doctors. <laughs> we really don't have to pay consultancy, you know. <laughs> I, I, I treat my critics and my competitors as my free doctors. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so when you criticize me, I really become very happy. So that I can say, oh, okay, I didn't pay you for that. Let me check whether it is good or bad. If it is good, I take it. If it is bad, I move on. So the competition, like we were in retail trade in Chikubu. And then we established that this aluminium utensils factory of one of our uncles who was there and nobody was interested to come back to Uganda and why can't we? So somebody requested us that, can you help us to get it back? I said, I'll charge you. <laughs> so I think I lost my father in 86 in January in that period. Quite unfortunate. Yes, unfortunately, and uh, uh, thereafter, uh, we were still around 22, 21, so we had to take care of the family and all that. So somehow or another, it gave us a boost that now we are free. We can go to the uncles and do business with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so some of them told us that, why don't you help us to get it and we said nothing free, make up. <laughs> so they agreed to pay us 10 percent as shares as a, as a managing partner. Okay. So that's how we acquired it, we renovated it, then obviously we kept on increasing the stake until we are 50 percent, 51 percent as controlling shares. And we kept on growing, but the competition, as I said, when we entered, most of the players in aluminium were more than five. So Uganda aluminium was there, then there was Nakasiro soap works, Chapa Nyota, and then uh, at least I remember that there was Chinese, some Chinese, two Chinese were there. Okay. So. Um, it has never been that there is no competition, but innovation, that is why I am here, because don't think that I will not learn anything here. <laughs> oh, thank you. <coughs> so you have to be innovative and we went into a first recycling plant. I think since 70s, 72, Uganda had East African Aluminium Works, which was supplying utensils to entire East Africa. But they didn't have a recycling plant. So I picked that. And we said, if we do that, then we'll survive for a longer period. Just to, to, to hold on for a second. In other words, you identified what they were not doing. Yes. Quite interesting. And that is, I think, a key lesson for everyone of us to, 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 you know, to, to pick out. OK. It's, it's called a competitive advantage in management terms. In all our businesses, we have to think that what is something which I alone can do and nobody else can do it within the business. I'm okay. not trying to copy. So once you build a competitive advantage that you are investing more and uh, you are putting an extra anti barriers for your competitors to come in, because that investment will keep you a bit ahead. And you all know, you know, when you have a race, Olympic race and all, okay. everybody knows only the first one. The second one may be only one second behind him. No, <laughs> if I ask you who stepped on the moon, you will know the first one. Second one you may have forgotten. That's true. <laughs> so we have to be one step ahead of our competitor. One, only one step. <laughs> and that step will remain for 10, 20 years and it will help you to build your business. <laughs> so, Mr. Shumuk, uh, if, having said that, what can anyone do to be the next Shumuk of Uganda? I mean, a man like you, from Chikubo, to be rated as one of the top five millionaires of Uganda, I don't think that is an easy thing. 
that is a dream to many startups that are in this audience today. What does one need to do to be the next Shumok, probably? First of all, I would advise that don't go on those tycoon and billionaire figures. That is very misconceiving. Okay? Every business has its balance sheet. And don't get impressed because of the media issues. Uh, important thing is consistency and hard work. S the development is there. There are so many opportunities even today. I don't think Uganda can finish the opportunities we have, even if we are 20 million entrepreneurs. The question is, are we consistent and are we putting enough focus? I think this generation, you have a big problem of focus. You see, we had 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't have so many choices like you have. You have your uh, WhatsApp <laughs> and you can be in the world at the same time and you will not know what to do. Because according to me, your biggest challenge is that remain focused. What you want to do, do it consistently, persistently and passionately. Because I think so many hurdles will come unless you have passion. You will give up, either because of money, or because of a relative saying this, or because of somebody says, no, there is a good opportunity here, let's do this, let's do that. So your biggest challenge is remain focused. Whatever you want to do, let us agree that in this world, you don't need to become a billionaire to remain peaceful. Okay? So my request is that when I started business, I didn't want to become as far as the net worths are concerned. It's, it's not my prerogative because we had options of Muse having heaps and heaps of titles <laughs> and he didn't touch even one, neither we have touched even one. You know there are 70,000 Muindis, they must have left so many things. He said, nothing doing. So in life, according to me, we should develop a balanced personality. Balanced personality means your physical development should match your mental and spiritual development. If we go only for physical development like doing exercises and I am a weightlifter and everything and your brain, your thoughts are not cleaned, you may become my brother boxer, nyakana or somebody, <laughs> but then the business wise, you may not be very, uh, what you can say, balanced. Okay. The success, I don't know what is the definition of success, I'm still learning, okay? <laughs> but to me, su success is more related to internal satisfaction. Suppose you have eaten food today and you were very hungry, if I ask you ten times, how happy you are. Hmm? It's only you who knows. Is it true? So I don't think I can describe how, how happy you are. So the satisfaction part is very important because we, we don't have to become Bill Gates to remain happy. My muse, I am telling you, we were modest. His total saving was not less than uh, less than ten thousand dollars when he passed away. Also, if the entire life, twenty-five years, and to me, I have not seen a more happier person than him. <laughs> hmm? So, the happiness is not money alone. It's 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 a means to achieve an end. Please don't make it an end. <laughs> I think that is quite deep and uh, <laughs> quite understanding. For those that are following us on social media, we'll say thank you so much for joining us. And for those that are right here with us at Kafiro Foundation and watching that, we'll say please keep following that. And as Mr. Shumuk has said, you must be consistent and persistent as well as keep very focused. When we return, 
we'll continue with the discussions. And for now, we'll say mm -hmm. we'll take a quick commercial break. And when we return, we'll have more questions. And for those that may be having more questions that may be going directly to Mr. Shumok, I'll ask you to feed them right on a, uh, on, on a social uh, media platforms on, on a Facebook, and that is kafero.tv. <laughs> on Twitter, that is kafero.tv. And when we come back, Mr. Shumok will be glad to ask you more questions. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.